Right, I hope this video doesn't come across as being sort of very anal retentive or anything like that. But what I want to do with this video is basically try and explain some of the differences as far as I know between all the SHM masks. Um, I don't have an SHM-1, but that would obviously be the first one in this series, but I do have an SHM-41. Now the title of this video is going to be, Only One of These Masks is a GP-5. And indeed, only one of these masks is strictly a normal GP-5, but there's also a GP-5M here. Now, I'm going to point the masks in order, and tell you what they are. Um, but this is mostly just so you can understand that the GP-5 is a mask, or the SHM-62U to be precise, is one of the masks in a series of Soviet or Warsaw Pact gas masks that is basically a much bigger series than the mask itself, because... Because I'm quite into gas masks, I get quite annoyed when people say a mask is a GP5 when it is not a GP5. The thing you have to understand is the GP5 was a mask in a much wider series of masks. Um, basically the GP5 was a mass-produced civilian one, therefore becoming the most famous of these masks. Or the GP5 kit to be precise. But there's lots of masks that don't come in. So on the very far left I have the SHM-41. Now... The SHM-41 is the successor to the SHM-1, which is where I should really begin, but I don't have one. But the SHM-1 was a mask that, either during World War II or at the end of World War II, depending on which source I've read, the Soviets kind of wanted a really simplified, mass-producible gas mask. And that became known as the SHM. Now, if you translate the SHM, it's like a Russian abbreviation, the full Russian word I'll have no chance of pronouncing. But basically it just means helmet mask when you translate it into English. The SH, uh, so it's easier to not think of the S in the front, just think of it as a HM helmet mask. I like to think of the S as Soviet helmet mask. But anyway, SHM just means helmet mask in English. And then the numbers either correspond with a year or correspond with a production version. So the SHM-1 is, you know, circa 1944 or 1945. And the SHM-1 basically was a mask used at the end of World War II maybe. Um, very similar in appearance to this but a bit more primitive. So now we have the mask known as the SHM-41. Now this is the one you really need to pay attention to because this is the one that all the masks are more directly sort of descendants of. And the SHM-41 could come in a variety of carry satchels. Um, there's two at the top there. You can see the East German kind of plasticky vinyl type one and on the right a Polish carrying satchel. But regardless, they all came in roughly very similar sort of carry bags, and the idea is that you would have the mask, a hose, sometimes they were coated hoses, sometimes they weren't, and you'd have some sort of canister filter, whether it be EO14, EO16, EO65Ks, you know, whatever. They would come with the mask, a canister filter like with a World War II mask, but all the bits could be screwed on separately. You would screw your hose onto the filter canister, You'd put the filter canister secured in the area of the bag it goes in, where there's a hole underneath so you can breathe. And then obviously the hose would lead to the mask that you'd have on your head. So, these kind of bear strong resemblances to the World War II masks, in the sense that you have a big filter canister, a hose, and then the mask, rather than just simply having a mask with a filter that screws straight on. So, we have the SHM-41. And the main reason you can tell these are SHM-41s is they have this bigger metal piece. You can see an actual GP-5 here, or SHM-62U. Much smaller amount of metal, because it's designed to be cheaper to produce, we'll get to that. Tissot system looks like this on the inside. But for the most part, if you're familiar with a GP-5, which I'm sure most of you will be, this mask, for the most part, is a GP-5, or the GP-5 is, for the most part, an SHM-41. So the main difference, the SHM-41s have the bigger intake-outtake valve assembly. Um, you'll see the GP-5 next to it, that's far smaller. So, yeah, the difference is the GP-5, thinner rubber usually as well, but much smaller filter intake, because that was a way of reducing costs with the mask. Other than that, they're very similar. Again, I think the Tissot system on the GP-5 looks slightly different, but... There's not loads to it in that regard. But yeah, if you're being serious about gas masks, um, and you want to be really serious, the GP5 is a separate thing from the other SHM series, and I do see a lot of surplus sellers, 
either selling SHM series masks that aren't GP5s as GP5s or vice versa. Um, and it's much worse if you're doing it in a vice versa way because um, an SHM41 is worth more than a GP5 because there's less of them about. So don't buy a GP5 that somebody says is an SHM. Again, look at photos of the valve assembly, see what it comes with in the bag. Because um, SHM41s should come with all the um, big canister filters. It might come with a ver you know a variety of canister filters, but they come with canister filters. Um, you know, like coffee cans and things, or the EO14s, not the GP5 filters. Unlike the other masks, GP5 kits normally came with the GP5 filter. It says GP5 on it that would you would screw directly onto the mask itself. You wouldn't normally have a hose and a canister. Although I have seen the GP5 kits that do seem to have the black GP5 in it, a hose, and then some sort of coffee can filter. So maybe there was some variety or civil defence variety version of it that did come with a bigger canister. But for the most part, they come with these. The famous GP5 asbestos filter, the GP5 mask. All these filters have asbestos in, by the way. There's not a magic one that doesn't. I have heard there is one Soviet filter that was just an industrial one that features only charcoal, no particulate layer. If you have that mask, then it probably, mask filter, it probably is safe, but for the most part, don't risk using them. Okay, so on the right, we now have a Polish MUA gas mask, which is the Pol Polish OM14 with a voice diaphragm. And um, the Polish OM14 is basically the Polish SHM41, but it uses zinc parts rather than whatever metal is used on here. So it's shinier and looks cooler. The Polish masks also tend to be actually white rubber, not grey, but I don't know how well that will show up on the video. And of course, as soon as they get a bit old and been in the sun or something, the rubber discolours anyway, so it's hard to see the original colour. But the MUA is the Polish M41 for voice diaphragm. I didn't put my Polish M41 or OM14 here and again in this video because it get even more cluttered. Not much difference between it and an SHM, just that the um, MUA has the voice diaphragm and normal OM14 doesn't normally comes with these Polish EO14 canister filters in the satchels. Okay, now for the GP5M or PMG2. This is simply a GP5 with ears cut out and a voice diaphragm on it. No real difference there, it has the exact same intake outtake assembly. After this sort of GP5 was becoming the mass-produced Soviet civilian mask, I think the Soviets realised why put bigger assemblies on like the SHM41s when you could cheapen things. I'm assuming that SHM for the most part, although with the Soviets they kept normally a lot of factories still making them, I assume SHM-41s were done in the most part earlier on in the Cold War. Then when they tried other masks like PMGs and PMG-2s and everything, they sort of stopped production of them or slowed down production. So you can probably get ones made up until 1991, but I imagine the amount of factories making them you know, went down over time when they were designing other masks and trying to make other masks. But the weird thing of the Soviet Union is you can pretty much find any Soviet gas masks, even the horribly outdated ones, pretty much made up to 1991. I don't know if the MM1s particularly were, but because of how Soviet industry works, which is kind of quite fascinating why they made just so much of everything, they basically had factories that just carried on doing production runs of older, antiquated stuff because it was more expensive to convert the factory to do anything else, and it kept people with a job if you just kept on making antiquated equipment. So that's what they did. And then on the very far right of this video, we have the horrifying Polish SR1 casualty mask, head wound mask, which I've shown before, I don't really want to all unfold it, but it's a giant version of an SHM41 with straps and stuff on the outside and weird like this weird spongy pad thing um, for, um, let's get that a bit further right so you can see it a bit better, um, but you know, basically this is designed so that you can put over somebody's head if they have a head injury and then strap it on around their neck and maybe tighten it around the head as applicable. Again, this would have a hose and be attached to probably in the EO14 filter, but again, you can see it bears a similarity to all the other SHM masks because the main part of the mask primarily is an SHM41 or an OM14, however you want to call it. So again, this isn't a fully conclusive video, but what I hope that you can understand from seeing this is that this is only the real GP5 here. All the other masks are not GP5s, but lots of sellers will say things are GP5s and not, or vice versa. 
and you also, you know, um, have people online who are convinced that their GP5 is another mask, or vice versa again. So, the easy way to tell a GP5 apart from the other masks is, other than it coming in its, you know, cheapy GP5 bag with a GP5 filter, is that the GP5 SHM62U has the very short metal intake outtake section. As far as I'm aware, there's nothing particularly interesting on them that you know signifies which mask it is actually on it but again you're most likely to encounter one of these rather than one of the other masks when looking online from surplus sellers or whatever else so um bear that in mind as I said I think there was a GP5 issued or a GP5 kit issued where they had the SHM62U face piece mask with a hose and some sort of coffee can filter because um, it does look like the short brown intakes. And again, I could be wrong, maybe there's been other variants of SHMs made with the shorter intakes as well, but the main difference between SHM41's, the GP5's dad, and the GP5, or SHM62U, is the bigger, as you can see, assembly there, where the um, intakes are, and they are a different colour. You know, just to look at those two more closely, you will see that Basically, the SHM has a much bulkier intake outtake uh, than the GP5 does, but other than that, they are very similar. Maybe the Tissot tubes are slightly different, but there you go. As I said, it's only a very anal retentive thing if you want to do this, but if you are trying to sound informed about gas masks, you might want to learn some of the difference between the SHM series of masks. Because these are all helmet mask designs, the hood kind of designs, but they aren't all the same mask. And I imagine, you know, as the Polish OM14 kind of masks are different, there might be other Warsaw Pact states or Eastern European states that made their own SHM variants that were, again, different from all the others. But, you know, hopefully this will show you at least what makes these masks a bit different than the others. Okay, and just to give you one last look at what a pure GP5 or SHM62U would look like and a pure SHM41, uh, there's my SCHM41 with its coffee can filter and the hose assembly in front of the bag it would be in. There's a GP5 in front of the cheap cotton bag it would be in with its GP5 filter on. So, when you get them as a kit, they're more likely to look something like that. So... Of course, it's not a perfect way of identifying gas masks which bag they come in, because sometimes they do get shipped in random bags. Or I guess the factory had an oversupply of one kind of bag, and maybe it wasn't the same factories that made the bags that made the mask, you know, there's all these sort of factors. But in general, you can sometimes look at the kits they come with, and then be able to work out what the mask is based on that. As I said, the primary thing is the snout, or the intake-outtake of the mask, varies quite a bit from SHM41s to GP5s, SHM62Us. So, bear that in mind when you're looking at one to try and work out what it is. Hopefully this video has been helpful and not too boring for the people who find this sort of stuff interesting.